passionately. And he said, my daughter, sit down. He said, do you know why this man is here? He's here because of what I am doing. He's not here because he likes me. He's here because there is an anointing he needs. He needs direction. He needs a prophetic word. If I stop doing what I'm doing, he will not come back again. Let him wait. That's why my secret place is the greatest. You don't find me gallivanting around. I'm like a herbalist. You don't see me strolling around and then buying orange, peeling it and just moving around. No, because you are gathered here tonight because you love God. It is true. But you have come to hear a man who you consider to be anointed. And the only reason why you will keep coming and listening, and the only reason why nations will keep coming, is because of this ability. The miracle service is by the corner. There are sick people, HIV, cancer, all kinds of oppressed people. In this place right now, there are families that have traveled kilometers to come. And they are trusting God for a touch. And so, the greatest publicity of a believer, men of God, get this, the secret place. That's the place you receive strength. That's the place you receive innovation. That is where you receive this. He says, I have found David my servant. And with my holy oil, I smeared him with oil that activated an ability. Let's look at the next three verses. 21. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm shall also strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face, and plague them that hate him. 24. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. He said, Thou shalt increase my greatness, and comfort me on every side. Listen. My prayer is that the least among us here will be as great as David. But you know, if you take it from the standpoint of intelligence, there are people who are a thousand times more intelligent than you. Your advantage in the kingdom is the backing of the spirit. Please listen. If you keep me side by side with brilliant people, I may not have too much to say. If you keep me side by side with intellectuals, I may have something to say, but maybe not much. If you keep me around older people, they have experience. I may only have little to say. If you keep me around people, the world is full of cynical people. Even if I want to bless them, they will not believe in me. Either because I'm not their tribe or because of certain parameters. So my bailout is the anointing. I got the anointing upon my life jealously. I can lose everything but not his presence and the anointing that it means. He says, But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him, and in my name shall his horns. Listen, God can exalt the horn of a man. God spoke to us that this is the season of the rain. And the rain is already falling. I tell you, people's stories are changing. God is taking people to newer levels of wealth. Newer levels of the anointing. Newer levels of the spirit. Inside and outside. Some of you are standing. There are no seats standing by the fence. Listen. You are face to face with destiny. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit. If you've never believed in the ability of God in you, I want you to believe it. Ephesians 3.20 And then we'll pray. Ephesians chapter 3, please, verse 20. Help us, media. Verse 20. 20. 3.20 Everyone read it together. Now unto him, who is the him? The Almighty God, who is able to do, say God is able to do, in me, whatever he desires. God is able to do in me. 
God is able to do in me. Years ago, when I saw these meetings, I, 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 I would say I didn't believe them, but it was difficult to explain it. See, let me tell you something. There are times a vision can be so great, there's no point trying to share it. Because nobody can understand. But only be consistent. When you begin to birth wonders, then the world will know. He's a mighty God. And I want you to believe me. He can change anyone's story. God can make you the song of many. Like David. The song upon the mouth of women and children. Young and old. You reign. You reign since Zion's king. Kadosh. Kadosh. You are mighty on your world. Thank you. 
is an ability from heaven. It's an ability from heaven. An ability from heaven.
the name of Jesus. I come against every challenge, every mountain standing on my path to the next level. I challenge you by the anointing. I challenge you by God's ability. And I command you to give way. Lift your voice and pray. Challenge them. Speak. Make sure you are praying. You have an anointing. It shall come to pass in that day that the yoke shall be taken from off your neck and it shall be destroyed. Levels of grace and glory only the anointing can bring. 
I like you to pray that every door of favor you need to enter, may the anointing bring you into it. Lift your voice and pray. The distance between you and a major breakthrough is one door of favor away. Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performer. In the name that is above all men, everything that has stopped the grace upon your life from finding expression, 
everything that has brought the grace of God upon your life from being recognized by those who you are sent to. I tear up that veil tonight in the name of Jesus. Everything that has brought the flow of grace from the realm of the Spirit to you, it leaves heaven but it doesn't get to you. Every pathway in the Spirit, by whatever mystery that has been brought, I open it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spiritual inaccuracy in the name of Jesus, every missing the mark spiritually, every disalignment, everything that makes you get it but not complete, you receive things from heaven but you don't get the full details. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I supply power to your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, some of you have dreams, but you have an incomplete dream. Just when the information you need in the dream is about to come, then you wake up. You know it was of God. It was holding the key to clarity for something probably right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. May there be spiritual accuracy. I speak in spiritual accuracy. I prophesy spiritual accuracy. Everything that has made you timid and fearful and made you think you are nobody and that the anointing cannot find expression in your life. Tonight I cross that spirit. By the God of heaven I cross fear. I cross intimidation. I cross timidity. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I prophesy to you in this season, arise. Arise and shine. It's your season of the rain. Every dryness in your life, it is swallowed up by the rain. The Bible says of the Spirit will pour upon us from on high. Isaiah 32, 15. Until the Spirit will pour upon us from on high. And then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine. And a fruitful vine will be counted for a forest. Everything that has covered your glory. A man can walk with his glory covered. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the one who is the lifter up of men, by the agency of the Lord, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, may your glory begin to speak from today. I prophesy, may your glory begin to speak from today. Hallelujah. Are you getting the whole thing? It wasn't just because Israelites were wicked people. No. The moment they became a covenant people. When John the Baptist came into the scene, what happened? The spirit of the Antichrist started moving the scribes to ask, are you the Christ? He wanted to know, are you the Christ? And John kept confusing them. He said, I'm the voice of one. He said, well, who are you? Are you the Christ? Don't confuse us. He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Repent. The moment John said, this is my, he said, behold the lamb. When he mentioned that from that time, watch this, Jesus became the enemy of the scribes, the Pharisees, and everybody. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, um, Matthew chapter 4, when he took him, he said, man shall not live by bread. That's, he told him, turn this stone into bread, right? Temptation number 2, he took him to a pinnacle in the temple and he said, jump. Jump. Many of us would have jumped and died. Because we always like proving we are anointed. <laughs> you would have jumped and died. That would have been it. Case closed. No redemption. Verse. Next. Now watch this. Watch this. Verse 6 please. Let's go to verse 6. Or 7. 7. I'm looking for the third temptation. Uh, okay. 8. Let's look at 8. Okay. 
Okay. He says again, watch this. He says the devil takes who? Jesus, your Jesus. Satan told him, follow me. And Jesus went. It's in your Bible. Why? Because he had the keys of dominion. The very key of Adam was in his hands. And God had to respect it. He said, he took him to a high mountain. Where is this mountain in the earth today? That when you stand upon, you will see the glories of the world. It was a spiritual thing here. It was not just a, which of the mountains do you stand? He said, Satan took him into, not upon, into. He entered somewhere. It's in your Bible. He took him into a high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. He said, it is mine. I know that you want this. Satan revealed here to us the strategy of the advancement of the Antichrist system. Watch this. This is how Satan markets it. In that mountain there is wealth. In that mountain there is job without struggle. In that mountain there is free marriage without toasting. Look up please. Are you getting what I'm saying? And he said he took him up to that mountain. And he showed him the glory. So watch this. Satan never tells you what you are to do. He first shows you what you will get. So that it becomes difficult to say no. This is what he did to Jesus. He took him there and showed him everything. And then verse 9. And said unto him, All these things I will give thee. Meaning it was within his power to give anybody. Is it true? He <laughs> says, If thou will what? If thou will what? Are you seeing that? That was all. So it's not about money. It's not about cancer. It's not about HIV. It's about allegiance. It's not about witchcraft in your family. It's not about refusing the church from growing. It's not about stopping you from passing jam. It's bigger than that. Satan does not need all those things. It's not about demons oppressing you. There is a bigger story. If you don't understand, you will sit down in spiritual myopia, fighting all kinds of things. Here's the key. If thou will fall down and worship me. The Bible says the same spirit operated in Nebuchadnezzar and he built 90 feet of solid gold. Is that true? And he said the moment you hear music, everybody do what? Bow. Now, the goal is this. Satan does not want you to bow down directly to him. Because he, is, he was the God of this system. Watch this. He said, bow down to anything that is not God. It's still the same thing you are doing. Bow down to money. Bow down to women. Bow down to your uncle. It's still the same thing. Are you understanding the, the structure of the Antichrist system? So, the Antichrist system is not just the system of occultism and witchcraft. It's the system that brings your life under compulsion to an allegiance to any other thing outside of the Christ. And there is a way that happens. Are you getting blessed, please? Jesus was eventually going to take back the kingdom. Take back the keys. But Satan said, why follow the long route? We can negotiate and I can make this thing easy for you. Why go through all of this, this thing? Just bow down and have it. Right? Why spend years, uh, 10 years and, and almost die building a bungalow? Bow down to me and own estates. That's why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Have you read it in your Bible? If he does what? That means you can do business with your soul. The question is, who is buying it? You are the one selling it. Who is buying it? What shall it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? That means you sell your soul. The question is to who? Who is this person that can buy and do business with souls? Revelation 18. Let me show you. We hail you most high. I hail you most high. Revelations 18. Let me read very quickly. Watch this. It's going to be a long reading, verse 1. Revelations 18, verse 1. Are you there? 
And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was made bright with his glory. And he cried with a mighty voice, saying, What? Babylon is Babylon the Great is falling. It says, and it's become the habitation of demons and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean beast. Watch this mystery. Verse 3. Let's see if media can help us. If you are fast enough to help us, then fine. Otherwise, I'll just go back to my Bible. For all nations have done what? Have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's why you see women representing that system. Jezebel, Babylon. When they meet prospective kings, when they meet talented people like a harlot comes to a man, they come seeking a fraternity. Bow down to me. Fraternize with me. And I will open the gates of the kingdom. I will open the gates of wealth. I will open the gates of grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? It says, and the kings of the earth have done what? Committed fornication with her. And the merchandise of the earth are worth rich through the abundance of her delicacies. She made them rich. She made the man a governor. She made the man a president. Voting or no voting. Huh? She made them celebrity stars on TV. Took them from rags to riches. Babylon the Great. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you understand this, you find out that nothing happens in the system until your allegiance to a deity is confirmed. That story of ri nobody rises up from nowhere is a lie. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a spiritual dimension to everything in life. When you see somebody just get up, travels out of the country and comes back and becomes a millionaire, the Bible says, ah, okay, we're in verse 4. The Bible says in verse 3 that the kings committed fornication with her. Hmm. Let's run to verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived luxuriously shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. So there is a prophecy. The Antichrist system will crumble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Already there is a prophecy ahead. That anyone that fraternizes with this system will join them. Babylon is falling. That was a prophecy. The system of the Antichrist will be crumbled. And there is an entity that will make that happen. The name of that entity is called the church. This is why I'm teaching you what we're teaching. The church is not an institution. The church is the name of the spiritual entity that will crumble this system. Verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in what? One hour is your judgment come. One hour, all you will see is the smoke. The smoke of that city. Now watch this. I told you that through civilization, this strategy of the devil has been masquerading itself. In ancient times, the kings had fraternity with all of these demons of darkness and all of that. Watch this. When Jesus came, Jesus came to bring us back into the allegiance to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But then from that time till now, there is a contention. And the contention is twofold. Number one, an opportunity given to every man to individually declare his allegiance. And then number two, to bring territories under the corporate allegiance of God. Are you seeing that now? So the first dimension is personal. That's what you call new birth. That's what you call salvation. A declaration that I choose. I have an option to choose between Babylon and this. I will show you how that many Christians suffer casualty. Because they claim they are born again. But they are still operating in the system of Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? 
And so Satan makes sure that the boss in the office, right, fraternizes with Babylon. He, he will not go to the devil directly. He will go to a herbalist. And they will say, just make sure this and that happens. And you are the boss. And now you come to work, a Christian. You now come to work and you are under intense pressure. Because the presence of that man wants to push you to compromise on your integrity and your allegiance. Have you seen how Babylon works? So you graduate with first class and you hold your degree and you are happy. The moment you enter the labor market, they stop you. They say, not so. Who sent you? Whose allegiance are you? You say, anyone, I need a job. That's the point. That's the point. The devil leverages on your desperation to succeed. Are you getting me? And shuts the mouth of preachers from teaching that the kingdom of God too has a structure for your success. So in your desperation, Satan comes. He came after Jesus finished praying for 40 days. When a man finished praying, don't you need food? Praying and fasting. So he waits until that desperation is there. 29, 30, 31, 32. Your mother tells you, don't return to my house again if you will not bring a husband. And the devil now comes. Babylon, there is an easier way. Bow down to me and a rich man will show up now. And you will think he's play. The moment you bow down, here comes a rich man. Right? And then you come and you begin that fraternity. Satan uses your allegiance to him to mock God. You see that? Let me tell you something. The greatest insult you can give the devil is to stick to God regardless of what happens. I love you whether things go right or wrong. And I'm ready to use your system. No matter how slow it is. You see why it is important that preachers teach their congregation the kingdom way of doing everything. The kingdom way of doing everything. So, you don't teach people, come to church, pray in tongues, but go to your, your workplace. And they just say, ah, they are sharing something. There's one five five hundred thousand that does not have a reason why they are sharing it. And they say, this is my pocket, just put my own fast. This is Babylon. Whether you, if, if nobody told you, I am telling you that is Babylon. So, it uses different things. Mammon, it uses lust, it uses different skills. But it's still the same thing. Watch this. In our time, in our time right now, the name given to that devilish system, there is a name. The name is subtly, there's no time I would have, I planned playing a documentary, but we'll, we'll sleep here all night. If God grants us grace, maybe next week. There is the name given to the evolution of Babylon. It's called the New World Order, right? In the time of the kings, right from the last one or two centuries ago, it was called the Illuminati. That fraternity of darkness. Right? I know many of you have heard about it and just laugh. Look up. Let me shock you. Let me tell you a few things that will surprise you. They have controlled the media. Walt Disney belongs to them. CNN belongs to them. They control the information you hear. They control the movie you watch. It's a system. Are you getting what I'm saying now? They control the stock exchange market, Wall Street. They control everything, the governmental systems. They define our scope of civilization. And yet believers are there praying in tongues in church. And we do not understand that we are the ecclesia. The name given to the system that would take the authority of Jesus and prove that darkness cannot prevail where there is light. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? Very important. Don't say it does not concern you. Don't say it does not concern you. When you are in class and somebody looks at you and is frustrated by your passion from God and all of a sudden you see three carryovers you know you did well. FFF, welcome, Babylon is at work. Are you getting what I'm telling you? When a lecturer looks at you 
and says, if you want to graduate, you know what to do. Go and wait for me at the back of my office. What is that? The Antichrist system masquerading itself. Now it's not even masquerading itself. It's coming out openly. A man looks at you and says, look at your employment letter. I tear it in your presence. You go back and say, Lord, I love you anyhow. God doesn't want that kind of prayer. It's good to love him anyhow, but the church must rise. He says, we are the city set on a hill. We will keep begging when we remain poor and broke we keep consoling ourselves that don't worry, the day Jesus will come, He will wipe our tears. He can wipe your tears now. Are you getting what I'm, sh I'm sharing with you? The system. Right now, little children watch cartoons and see. Right? All kinds of, 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 of things that should not be shown. Children are so addicted, not just because they want to watch. There is a com they have mastered the mind. Don't forget they are receiving assistance from the realm of the spirit. So little children love seeing blood. They love violence. You see a little doll baby, right? If they want me to buy this cup now, they will give this cup hips. Right? This cup will have hips. It will say, use me. And you see the man rush, I want this one. Ten. Bring ten of this cup. Why? Because... It is a system. It has been fabricated. It was so subtle. We didn't know when it has evolved. Are you getting what I'm saying right now? Seduction. The seduction. That's why it gives it the language of a fornicator. The same way a fornicator lures you into an unholy union. That's what Babylon is doing right now. They determine everything. Everything. They create the trends. They do everything that happens. They control our speakings. Our language. Right? They tell you what to say. They tell you what slang to say. They tell you what film to watch. They define what is civilization for you. If you do not assume a particular mode, you are not civilized. And it mounts pressure on you and forces you to bend. One time, I, I, I think, um, I don't know where they took me to and it was time to eat. And they brought all kinds of things. I told them, I said, the work that I do, if I use these utensils to eat, I won't be satisfied. Get me a spoon. I don't have time for, for nonsense. You bring all kinds of things. I, the Bible says, he who does not walk should not eat. That means he who walks. You watch people in the restaurant. Sweating, pouring rice on themselves because they must use fork. Right? Cutting themselves up with knife. I must do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't be civilized. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm saying, you see, a system has brought you under pressure. Right? I saw one guy bab his hair and bab dollars. And I said, this guy is broke. He's poor. Now, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a religious person, trust me. But I'm saying, it is the pressure. He probably watched the actor of a film. Or a musician with dollars or something on his head. And that must become like that. The pressure of Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? There were times when our secondary school had decent teachers. You dress, you talk in, you look nice. Now you go and see the people teaching. The guy enters as if he came to pick papers. How are you students? You see that? And, 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 the, and the students watch that. This is the model. This is the mentor that they have to become. If we do not become apostolic and prophetic in our approach, there will be casualty in the decades that are coming. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is this kind of agenda that should govern things like politics. People ask me questions, I say, I, I don't like PDP, I don't like APC, I don't like anyone. All I know is, whatever promotes God's agenda, I'm there. It's as simple as that. And we'll force the agenda of God to happen in this nation. For sure. For sure. The church is alive. Don't you think the church is dead? As Ebola, the church is very alive. Very, very alive. We sent it back to hell where it came from. Hallelujah. There may be imperfections, but the church is marching. Let me tell you, 
Jesus is found where the church is. No matter what happens, the church in Nigeria is alive. We are the firstborn of God who will present to the nations true apostolic and prophetic Christianity before Christ returns. Yeah, that rejected stone. That, why do you think Boko Haram and the rest? It's not just about politics. They are being led by an influence they do not know. But the church will stamp them out. Next week, I'll be showing you what we can do. Because they've made the church look powerless. That if you don't have... It's not just about finance. There is an anointing. Jesus Christ took his power and gave that system. Are you getting what I'm saying? He didn't just call one person and say, You, I give you. If you like this guy, I give him. No. He took his power. The power that will crumble Babylon. And said, My ecclesia, take it. I've given it to you. But we do not know the scope of our use of that power is healing of cancers and this. Right? We do not know that we have the authority to take charge of territories and compel it to come to the alignment of the Christ. Let me tell you something. Days will come when things will happen in this nation. You will be surprised. You will wait and see tongue-talking Christian bankers we will sack anybody who does not love God without apology. Look, look, look. Watch this. The members will be in our churches. So we are the ones who will teach them. And this big mouth, it won't keep quiet. My goodness. My goodness. That time is coming. It's coming. That's what you are becoming. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear. They don't know it. God has shrouded us in a mystery. When it's done with us, we will prove to creation that Jesus did not tell a lie. A witness is one who claims that the claim of another is true. If, I, if you steal our money and I saw you, right? And we're in court. They will say, stand, hold your Bible, swear that nothing but the truth. The moment you finish, they say, did you see it? I say, I saw it. They say, prove it. I say, this is the picture. So the church is here to demonstrate that although we were not there at the cross, there is a spirit that was there and he's in us. And in partnership with that spirit, we will prove that he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. No longer allowing Babylon to kill our children. Huh? I wanted to cane one small boy one day. I just saw him. He just looked at one small girl who was running to go and kiss her. I wanted to call him, use two fingers, and just whip him and say, Who taught you? <laughs> Probably watch somebody do it. House help, relatives in the parlor, all kinds of, 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 of TV. Right? Look. Church, I want you to wake up. That's why we call this series the Imagines. There is an Imagines. The Bible says, Obadiah 1 verse 21, it says, Saviors. That's what he called them. Saviors shall arise. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Romans 8 verse 18, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared. There are people, there are people sitting right here that death will not carry them. It's not the issue of I shall not die. You can't die. The assignment compels God's integrity upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, no, no. Please believe what I'm telling you. There is a reason why you should not die. If you think it's just to keep being a liability to creation, you are in trouble. There is a way you become so relevant to the agenda of the king. And God gave us a sign. He said, when you begin to see darkness upon the earth, start rejoicing. It's time to arise. Are you not seeing what is happening in the earth? The meltdown. They've not seen anything. A heavy melt. Because the selfishness of man will never allow him to carry out Satan's agenda. Somebody will betray somebody. They don't have love. They cannot love. Because love is shed abroad by the Holy Ghost. Love is not affection. Love is shed abroad. That character that can make you almost die to protect another, they don't have it. That's what happened to Boko Haram. They started killing everybody, all and sundry. When those who sponsored them started denying, they said, Oh, you are denying us. Let's everybody, you are our enemy. Hallelujah. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Nations will crumble 
it has only started. You, the pride of kings will be humbled. Their equation is being interrupted by a hand they cannot see. Like Belshazzar, the handwriting on the wall, when it writes upon your government is over. You have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. Many kings have, they've, they've, they've spoken like the beast. Their blasphemy has risen to heaven. Like the man who made the Titanic and vowed that even God cannot sing the Titanic and stood in awe when the Titanic sank. Only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. There are people who have vowed and say, if you're, before your family will rise, me, I am the custodian of the oracles of this village. Watch God bring them down. We are here to stamp out nonsense. Listen, Jesus said, all hail. He said, all authority. The word is exousia. The capacity to stand in my office. All authority to unlock the heavens and the earth has been given to me. I give it to you. Please believe it. I give it to you. This is the mindset I carry when I pray for the sick. I know that they are, I take their sickness personal. Because this is about the kingdom of our father and what the devil is doing. It's not about what their village is doing. Kill yourself there in your village. No. Hallelujah. So Satan has structured it well. He has marketed the gospel of prosperity subtly to the church. So that we remain poor and broke because the borrower is always slave to the lender. Right? He has marketed all kinds of things. So the attack is coming everywhere. Spiritually. Notice, brothers and sisters, that our, our forefathers and grandfathers gave birth to 13 children, no CS. Huh? What they used to call the placenta of the baby, we don't even know. Whether it's hot, cold, whether, whatever. They just caught that 13 times and nothing happened. But here a woman comes because of her allegiance to God. Something happens. They now start saying there's a fiber. That devil is a liar. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Papa Lava shit up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yeah, break every chain, break every chain. Sing it one more time. There's an army rising up. The rising up, the rising up, the so the goal of the antichrist system is total allegiance to satan as the source and the sustainer of all things full stop that's the one goal of the antichrist system to compel humanity to total allegiance to satan as the source and the sustainer by depending on your boss for your daily bread you are partnering with that there is an economic system of the kingdom that is bigger than your boss. But if you do not know and you have been taught that it's salary that will fund your assignment, you become a slave to that boss. Then he sleeps with you when he wants to sleep with you. Then he sacks you when he wants to sack you. But there is an army of apostolic billionaires. Not just careless money mongers. The secrets of the kingdom shown. We are paying the price now and the world is laughing. Like the ark of Noah, the spirit of Elijah is bringing us to that reality. You've not seen prosperity yet, brothers and sisters. Wait until the army rises. Men whose wealth will be as equal as that of continents. They will walk like gods upon the earth. Why should you beg for, give me $35 to air a program? 
How much is it when a prostitute sleeps with a billionaire and becomes a millionaire the next day? All these things are the speakings of the beast unto God. They rise as a, a filthy incense to the heavens. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's what is happening. Look at the graduates in Nigeria. One, one out of every ten graduates get a decent job in the first two years of graduation. That's the plan. Babylon at work. Babylon at work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yet, when you teach the church economic empowerment, they mock you. They say you are being carnal. Right? We do not know that the civilization of today moves upon the strength of economic empowerment. The person who has the resources dictate the rules. We are sick and tired of them doing every kind of thing. We will make our own programs. We don't have dull people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of you in your sleep. You see these things in dreams. You know that there is something about your life. It's beyond ABU. It's beyond Zaria. Some of you, God took you wherever and brought you here. God gave you admission with one touch. It's not about jam. It's about an agenda. Hallelujah. I see this thing every day. As the nations crumble, I see it as a signal. God is saying, Son, stand up. Stand up. Church, rise up. I call my bride, the firstborn of God, to arise. But the reason is because we have refused to pay attention to the things that empower us. Hallelujah. The, the chairman board of trustee of this ministry was, he was decorated a general last year. I said, that's right. Anybody that disturbs us will tell him. It's part of kingdom advancement. Gathered men of influence and shut the gates of darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The kingdom will promote the ideology of God through one word. It's called influence. 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 That's why we'll keep contending for greater anointing and greater grace. The devil has spoke blasphemy too much. Are you getting what I'm saying? The church has been mocked. They act Nigerian films and they act man of God on a demon and then the, he, he releases power in the name of Jesus and the demon holds the anointing and throws it on the ground. Come on now. Which one is that one? There are all kinds of anointings. Which one? Which one did he hold and throw on the ground? There is the one you get as talisman. There is authentic apostolic power that Jesus... Which one did the Havalis take and throw on the ground? See, we don't understand. These things bring money. But it is the, the generation of man bowing to Satan and receiving money. Let me tell you, if you are poor, let me just announce to you that your poverty is partnering with Babylon. Listen to me. It's a serious issue. It's not the issue of car. No! You don't, you don't need to be a Christian to have car. Men who will shut the gates of darkness sack lecturers that trouble our ladies employ the ones that call upon the name of the Lord next week I will show you the strategy I'm not just making noise I was trained in the wilderness of the spirit I'm not, I'm not a stupid person just making noise there is a strategy Lord you were higher than any other We will declare to the nations. Sing one more time. Say. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Hallelujah. We just returned from a conference in Kaduna. And while I was ministering yesterday, they just brought one mama. You can see the way the devil had oppressed this woman. They were dragging her to bring her out. The son was almost crying. And I said, hold on, we've not started ministering. They were desperate. Why? 
Most probably because they've gone to a lot of churches with men of God making noise. Jesus can do this. He is this. I know he can do this. Put your faith to work. The manifestation of the glory of God is a visible revelation of the power of God here and now. Here and now. The woman stood there. I was talking and I was just watching. I said, Mama, what is wrong? And they said, for five months, they've taken this woman to the hospital. They said, arthritis, she cannot walk. I, I said, that devil is a liar. All of a sudden, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw this innocent woman tied. I, from my head to her toe, I saw snakes. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. For this purpose, for this purpose, for that joblessness. The, every time you see a challenge, say for this purpose. For this purpose. They said you will not graduate for this purpose. They said no job will come for this purpose. For this purpose. For this purpose. For this purpose. Everybody in your family is an idol worshiper. But for this purpose you came. God has taken you as an envoy. To crumble Babylon. To crumble Babylon. It will happen. Forget about the pain of today. Hear me. Forget about the disappointment. I see men and women who will get married. Age two, your child is praying in tongues. Age two. A little boy. While you pray in tongues, he's praying. No, 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 no. Listen. We won't be fighting and beating our wives. It's over. We, by now we know it's a spirit. And we have authority against it. Men are not that bad. Women are not that evil. Babylon masquerading itself. Gone are those days. I tell you, all things are past. God is doing something new in our time. God is working something powerful in this day. God is building a mighty army in our days. And He won't stop, He won't stop till we look just like Him. He won't stop, hey, He won't stop till the church looks like Him. He won't stop, He won't stop till we look just like Him. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is building a mighty army in this place. He won't stop, he won't stop till the church looks like him. He won't stop, hey, he won't stop till the church looks like him. Listen. Next week I will show you the strategy on how this will happen. Don't you ever think you are little to make this thing happen. Once God can find a man and find a people, he will do mighty things. He told Jeremiah, don't say I am young. Don't say I am a child. I will put my, my words in your mouth. You will subdue, you will tear down and you will rebuild. Hallelujah. Tonight I came to challenge you. Babylon is falling. What you are seeing in the TV is falling. The old wine has finished. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The church is rising. Watch this. Nigeria, I told you, I've shared with you already the prophetic agenda of God. But Nigeria as a continent, this platform is not the platform I will share some things with you that God has revealed to me. There are some things that if they don't happen this year, the hand of Satan has been broken in Nigeria forever till Christ comes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a reason why you see darkness looming. It is beyond humans. It's an agenda. It's the attacking of the firstborn of God. But God is always one step ahead. When you see the church pray and we speak, don't let the devil fool you that nothing is happening. There is much that is being done in the kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When the dust settles, you will see a victorious church. He said, I will build. I will supervise that this church stands. I will build my church. 
But the goal is to have as many people come into this alignment. Look at me. One man cannot do this alone. One church, one ministry cannot do this. It takes a people who will say, Lord, we understand. Lord, we have pledged our allegiance first and foremost. There are many of us here. Your stand with God is not straight. We don't even know where you stand. As occasion serves. When in Rome, behave like any other place that is not Zion is of the devil. It's as simple as that. For you to be part of this army, your allegiance must not be confused. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? The gates will ask you. My brother, it's not all about business. They will trap you in that oil company. Where do you stand? You must answer the question. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? When you declare where you stand, and then you have committed whatever government you pledge allegiance to. As for me, I've made a decision. Thank God I'm going to be a father. From the womb. You know how John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Many men are not responsible. If you're a father here, God is speaking to you take charge. There are many homes you pray when there's trouble. If they don't pay the man three months I say, okay children, let's come together and pray. Say, let's pray because what God, the attack coming to this family. And you don't take your place. Right? Watch this. Forget about the flamboyancy you see on TV. Babylon is falling. It's a prophecy. Babylon is falling. And your assignment right now at this level is to be an envoy of the kingdom. Go to your territory. Do you know how Satan is ravaging our homes? There are people in our homes with terminal diseases. You are watching them. Take that authority and that anointing. If nobody has told you you are anointed, I'm telling you this night, you are anointed. Do you know how things went bad in my family? I heard, about, I heard about the things that surrounded my bed. And I said, Satan, you will pay for it. Ah! You will pay for it. Are you still afraid of the devil? Or should he begin to be afraid of you? I told you it's an old story. Satan is not the opposite of God. There was a day he was not existing. Satan has an exact creation date. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The strength of evil is deception. When you know where you stand and you understand what it takes to enforce that victory, you will stay clear of your life. Some of you get up in the morning, all kinds of pain, just a guy, this pain. Ah, is this not how my mother felt the other day? Is that what you should eat? Look, I told you, take this word. Whatever goes wrong in your life, say for this purpose. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that He may what? Destroy. 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 The church is the representation of the victory of Christ. The church is the representation of the fulfillment of prophecy. The church is the hallmark the symbol of the wisdom of God. And we cannot fail. There is a generation that must not fail. We are going to pray. Look, you must, you must tell God, I am available. I am available. Some of you, God is calling you from your slumber. Your spiritual slumber. Ladies, God is calling you. Forget about that Elijah and concentrate on God. Elijah gives you one million, you insulted God. God wants to make you a nation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Quit all of these carnal things and stay with God and watch Him bless you. Don't ever let any man fool you. You know, gone are the days where when you say you are going into ministry, people just look at you and say, Hey! You mean it? As if this kind, or you say, I'm going to marry a man of God. They say, Talk. 
His grace is of you. Why are you going to talk like that? You marry a busy businessman and you are happy. I'm X, Y, Z. You know, they have, it's part of this antichrist system. Because the, the, the revelation they are trying to say is you are marrying a poor, broke man. Right? Your job is just to be suffering. They, they imagine four legs of, of firewood trying to cook food for church. Must you think like that? Who taught you that? The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. Let no man fool you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is our year of the rain. The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. He wants to give you the anointing and the influence it will take to legislate. But he first wants you to understand this system. Anytime you bow to anything or any principle that is not of God, realize that you are communicating your fraternity with Babylon. That becomes the basis. Your love for God and your passion to see his kingdom come becomes the constraint upon your life to run away from evil. Not the fear of Satan. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not going to come and try to sleep with a lady now. Why? Not just because I'm afraid of Satan, but because I realize the significance of standing in my position to declare my love for God and my passion, my contribution to see His kingdom come. And that love constrains me. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why I preach. I came back, I came back to this town 12, 12 midnight on the dot. It was as if I was not seeing where my bed was. But I said, no problem, I must prepare. There are lives that we must sharpen because there is an agenda of God. And then one, one demon somewhere will go to call your name. I pity the devil that calls my name in any covenant. Number one is that the fire that will come out from whatever they are invoking. That's not all. Two, the harpalist would die as a lesson that not everybody is touchable. My goodness, no matter how a madman is, he will not enter fire by mistake. There are, there are, there are, there are madmen and there are madmen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Invoke nonsense. There are many times I'm about to travel. Somebody send a text. He says, it's so accident. I say, me. Hey, it's not, I'm not just bragging. I'm standing on a rock. Let this mind be in you. You have watched films where a boss will say, I will come and kill you and he will kill everybody helplessly. You have carried that mindset to work with God. The believer is supernatural in every way. I want you to understand this. Brothers and sisters, I've prayed for people with contagious diseases. If I'm lying by now, you would have known. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's easy to stand and speak. But what happens when you hug and talk to somebody with tuberculosis? Or somebody with a, a communicable disease? I've been doing this for years. My body is as healthy as a baby's body. Healthy as a baby's body. There is the reality of another life. That when it's at work in you, it will turn you into a superhuman hallelujah rise up we are going to pray i want us to insist on some things in the spirit please take this prayer session seriously for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to lift your voice and cry. And say, Lord, I declare, I pledge my eternal allegiance to you from today. There's no going back. There's no bending. Lift your voice and pray. You are the Lord of my life. There's no confusion about it. What shall separate us from the love of God? In the secret and in the open, I love you. I belong to your government. There's no confusion about it. I belong to your government. There's no confusion about it. Pray. Shekete ke lepo koso prekete le makata, skata prata likete, 
I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. My thought comes under the influence of your government. My words under the influence of your government. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. Look up. Let me speak to you. Whether you are coming from Plateau State or Kogi State or wherever, you are going to be you declare, I've been called out of every tribe. Hear me? Every tongue. Listen. Don't let yourself to be a victim of where you have come. You did choose it. Don't let anybody speak nonsense and say you came from Kogi State. You came from this. As though there is a cause upon your life and there is no way out. Prophesy with violence in your spirit. I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I challenge every power that is not of God. Oh, I'm anointed. I carry the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost as an envoy of power, as an envoy of the kingdom, as an ambassador, as a representative, called out of every cause, called out of every covenant, called out of every ordinance. Make at his angels win and his ministers flame from fire. I have no business with the ordinances of the Father, with the ordinances of witchcraft. I willingly, I choose this day that I serve the King. I choose this day that my allegiance is to cry of it. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. You are creating a reaction in the realm of the spirit. Silent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Look at me. There are many of you, humanly speaking, you are seeing patterns in your family and around your life you know should not be. It's true that you have been saying you are in Christ, but the truth is as it is right now. There are things you are seeing in your life that are speaking blasphemy to the Lord. You are going to pray. You know what it is. You are challenging Babylon first in your life and in your family. Call it by his name. And cause it by the God of heaven. Lift your voice and pray. Break those patterns. Come on up. Break those patterns. That pattern of childlessness. I break it. I cause it by the God of heaven. That pattern of failure, that pattern of loss, that pattern of addiction, that pattern of masturbation, that pattern of immorality. I cost you by the God of heaven. I cost you by the name that is above me. Pray the way out. Pray your way out. Pray your way out. Way out. I break the pattern. I of Jesus. I challenge the forces of darkness. Hey, I travel by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. The 
God shine for my family. The God shine for me. I cannot go down. No way. There is a spirit of God upon me. Call it my name, call it my name, call it my name. If thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, a Command victory, establish victory, the pain, establish victory in the name of Jesus. Break down the walls of witchcraft. Break down the walls of evil. Break down the walls of limitation. You are an ambassador to carry a people. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with me. Some power and might. Sing it from your heart. It's a song of victory. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with me. I tell you, you will come out a champion. No power will keep you. into two you're going to release prophecies upon that person listen 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 the bible says where the word of a king is there is power where the word of a king is there is power hallelujah i like you to pray as if you are praying for your own brother as if you are praying for your sister prophesy open the fountains of blessings Open the fountains of grace. Come on now. Koinonia, pray. I call you blessed. I strengthen your if you're sitting on the rain. The glory of the Lord is upon you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. Prophesy from the depth of your heart. Call it God. Even God who quickened at the death and calls from the things that be not as though they were. Prophesy. I call for that in your life. I of life passion. I call it God. I call it God upon the third dimension of wealth and abundance. Supernatural jobs. Open doors. New levels of revelation. New levels of Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we pray, we shift things in the heavens. When we pray, we, we grant the angels access to enforce the counsel of the, of the Lord. Listen. We are going to pray. The election is by the corner. We are going to pray. The Bible says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Zaria is our Jerusalem. We are going to speak to the borders of this city. We spare the hands of evil. The hands of bloodshed. You will not cross the circumference of this city. We hold the keys of this city. 
and we drive out every devil come on pray is your Jerusalem there will be peace upon our walls peace upon our borders Shalom Zaria Shalom Zaria we pray upon the borders of this city the north to the south we command peace Shalom Shalom nothing missing nothing broken we drive out every power we drive out every thought we take charge of the heavenly we take charge no death no bomb blood no bloodshed in the name of Jesus the church is praying the church is praying the government of God the institution the authorities of God is praying We speak hallelujah now we are going to pray i feel sorry for those who say nigeria will divide they don't know the mystery of our creation go and read isaiah 18 when you see the representation of nigeria in isaiah 18 you know that no human entity has what it takes to break this nation are you ready to pray you're going to pray to every border first secure your family I'm not hearing bad news. It's, it's not. No, 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 no. Refuse it and pray. Spread the peace of the spirit across the length and breadth of this nation. Go ahead and pray. We legislate as ambassadors of the kingdom. We command it in the name of Jesus. In Abuja, in Kaduna, in Jos, in Makodi, in Kofi State. For that God, we command, let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace in our nation. Even in the forthcoming election, let there be peace. Let there be peace. By the mercy of God. By the mercy of God. Remember your first born, O God. Remember she that you died for. Remember your first born, O God. For God and for God. We pray and we invoke the mercy of God upon our family. Frustrate the token of liars. Turn their wisdom backwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to know that you're establishing things in the spirit. This is how kings reign. The Bible says, let it be done in the earth. In other words, compel compliance. Hallelujah. Compel compliance. Now we are going to pray. This is the season of the rain. Hallelujah. And you are going to speak over your life. Remember I told us that God is, God is changing the dimensions and the levels of people. You must say amen to it in your life. And you are going to pray. There are all kinds of encumbrances that have mocked the integrity of God upon our lives. It's time to challenge it right now. You are going to speak. Whatever area, mention it. And speak. If it's marriage, say it. It must happen. If it's your finances, pray. The wisdom, the strategy, the grace. Lift your voice and pray. Papa 
From glory to glory. Lord, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom unto him that answers prayer. Shalom, flesh. And this is the confidence we have in him. That when we pray, he heareth us. It is within his power to grant us a request. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to begin to walk with this consciousness. I am part of the ecclesia. There is only one way the counsel of God can happen in the earth. The church. Only. There are not many options. The church is the strategy. The church is the force that will conquer Babylon. So I want you to know that whatever it takes for God to demonstrate his might in the church, he will do it. He will do it for his name's sake. He will do it for his name's sake. Walk in that consciousness. It pays God in every way to bring breakthrough to your family. It pays God in every way to make his word come to pass in your life. The question is to what degree are you willing to partner with him? Both in principle and in prayer. Hallelujah. I've made up my mind that in my life and in my time, the counsel of God must come to pass fully. 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 Hallelujah. There are people here before I just pray for all of us, there are people here right now, you have a desire to live for God and to serve God, but as it is, you are still operating in the government of the Antichrist. And God is calling you to make your ways right. And in a very unambiguous way, declare your allegiance. He said, choose ye this day, choose ye this day it is within your power you may not be able to change your life by yourself but you can make that decision there are people inside and outside right now hallelujah and as i make this call i want you to find your way and come it's our joy and pleasure to welcome you the victorious family because babylon is falling i guarantee you babylon is falling every system that is not of god will fail when all is said and done, Christ will still be seated upon his throne as the king. And the church will stand victoriously. Wherever you are, you need to make it right with God or rededicate your life. Make your way to the front right now. God bless you. Don't wait for anybody inside and outside. It's time to declare your allegiance. Choose ye this day. Choose ye this day. Whom you God bless you so much. We believe the word of the Lord has come with so much graces and with so much power reaching you all the way from this part of the earth. And like Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and in verse 5, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and much assurance. Let me pause there. I believe the word of the Lord which you have received from the mouth of his servant, Apostle Joshua Selman has been a mighty blessing to you. It didn't just come with word alone, it came with so much power. The revelation of the mind of the Lord, knowing the intent and the will of God for your life. 
it matters so so much and i believe convictions have been stirred in your heart because paul said he didn't just come with word but in power and in the holy ghost and in much assurance do well to keep your spiritual life updated every time that is the reason why by the message of god reflector hub tv has been mandated to this space bringing you the consistent will and mind of the lord through his servant apostle jesus servant i would like you to do well to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and also strike the notification bell so as to stay in touch with our regular and constant uploads so as to set your spirit man on fire god bless you love you so much